Hello, one and all present here. Uh, this is Amit Kumar Singh and welcome to my class on circles. Here I'll discuss the basic concepts of circles, uh, which is important for you to understand uh, as per class 9th CBSE. Uh, while for ICCSE students, uh, they can refer uh, the same content uh, when they are studying class 10th. So probably circle is very important topic. So it's not only about those who are studying CBSE or ICC. Anyone who's preparing for competitive exams also. So uh, in every exam, you know that you have uh, sub subjects like quantitative aptitude. In quantitative aptitude, definitely the questions on geometry will come. And when you are trying to prepare for geometry, uh, you need to be good with the concept of circles. So circles altogether is very important topic. So when we talk about circle, so basically everyone knows what is circle. So this is basically a circle. Although I could not make it a correct circle. So this is basically a circle. So pardon me for my diagram. So whenever we talk about circle, what the very important thing in the circle is to identify center. Okay, so you need to identify center. This question came also in NCRT also. How will you identify the center for a circle? So, so anyone who is good with the concepts of triangles, they know this question very well. So you know that the, the point of intersections of all the perpendicular bisectors of the triangle uh, will give you the circumcenter. So if you use the same logic here to, to identify the, the, the center of the circle, what you do, draw chords, draw any chord, like suppose there's a chord called AB, suppose there's a chord called CD, so draw chord, okay, and then uh, use rounder and try to draw the perpendicular bisectors, draw the try to draw the perpendicular bisector. So try to draw the perpendicular bisectors. So if you use rounder and try to draw the perpendicular bisectors uh, for, for this chord, so the point uh, where, where, the, they are, where the perpendicular bisectors uh, of, of this chords will intersect, that would be the center of the circuit. So, uh, so I hope you remember the concept of triangle. So when we are talking about triangle, so when we are discussing the triangle, so the point where all the medians of the triangle meet, that point was called as a centroid of the triangle and the centroid divide the median in the ratio two is to one. And the point where all the altitudes of the triangle meet, that was called the orthocenter. And the point where all the in angle bisectors of the triangle meet, that was called in center. So whenever you talk about in center, so, so if you, if you use in center to draw circle, so ultimately all the sides of the triangle will become the tangent to the circle. The circle is called in circle. Similarly, if you if you try to draw perpendicular bisectors on all the sides of the triangle, to the point where all the perpendicular bisectors of the triangle meet. So from that point, if you keep your rounder, considering suppose this point is O and considering the point A. OA as the radius and then if you draw the circle, uh, you will get a circumcircle. So this is what you need to understand. So what is the important part here uh, to understand in the case of circle? So in the case of circle, whenever we talk about uh, the center in the case of circle, so so you, you, uh, you can draw that. Uh, so construction chapter is there uh, for, for CBSE and ICC students and where they, they, they can work on the construction part by using rounders so they can draw uh, the perpendicular bisectors. And once you they found out the point of intersection of all the perpendicular bisectors, ultimately they can get the center of the circle. So once, once you understood the center of the circle, then probably uh, you can easily understand how to draw the radius. And, and, and once you get the radius, you can easily understand the diameter and the semicircle for the given circle. So I hope you're understanding whenever Whenever uh, we are talking about circle, whenever we are talking circle, sorry, so whenever uh, we are talking circle, so circle chapter is very important uh, in NCRT. So these all are the examples of circles. This self-explanatory. So how to draw the circle, you know that, how to draw the circle. So the collection of all the points in the plane, uh, which are at the fixed distance from the fixed point in the plane, that is called circle. So, so, you, so, so probably you can understand here. Uh, you can you can understand this that this 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 the circle what you're seeing here. The circle what you're seeing here. So this circle is nothing but the circle. It is a collection of infinite points. 
so infinite points like the way in chemistry we study item and and every item uh, so so infinite items all together uh, will make a cell and will make a nucleus then cell and all like the way how we study in chemistry the same thing so here also you can understand that if you are trying to join the infinite points all together so by joining these infinite points all together from a from a given from a given point suppose this point is the is the center of the circle so from the given point where all points are equidistant where all points are equidistant so where all points are equidistant from this common point so this what you will get ultimately you get a circle so whenever uh, we are talking about circle so the the distance uh, the so the so this distance from the from the center to the these points where these points are lying so this is called as the radius of the circle this is what we call this is called as the uh, radius of the circle so going further uh, so once you understand the radius of the circle if you try to draw if you are trying to draw the the line which 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 connect from one end of the circumference of the circle to the other end of the circumference of the circle that is called the chord so whenever you have a circle so whenever you have circle if you try to join any line if you try to draw any line which connect the one end of the circumference of the circle to the other end that line is called as chord this line is called as chord and the longest chord is the chord which passes from the center of the circle and that chord is called as the diameter of the circle okay so so going further when we are trying to understand a circle when we are working on on the concept of circles probably you understood the concept of of radius you understood the concept of center of the circle uh, you understood the concept of chord you understood the concept of diameter going further uh, like you need to understand something called arc so what is the arc of the circle whenever we talk about circle and we are trying to understand the the uh, on the circumference of the circle the length of of one end to the other end is called as the arc so here you can see this 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 length from p to q so this is called as minor arc so the smaller end is called as minor arc and the bigger end this is called minor arc sorry this is called as the minor arc this is called as the minor arc and the bigger end is called as the major arc so here if you get a circle and if you draw a circle like this if you draw a circle like this so this end from a to b so this is called as the minor arc this is called as the minor arc this length is called as a minor arc and and then the other end of the length this is called as a major arc okay so you understood this so now uh, whenever you draw a circle whenever you draw a circle suppose you draw the circle this is a this is b so the length this ab e, smaller than ab e, that is called minor arc and bigger length is called major arc and and the and the and the and the and the area and the area between the and the area between the arc and the chord this area is called as the segment this area is called as a segment so there there's a term called arc there's a term called segment so what is basically segment segment is the area between the chord and the arc of the circle that is called as a segment so i hope you are understanding this term whenever you talk about minor arc and major arc suppose if you get a arc suppose if you are getting an arc uh, where that arc where you where if you are talking about the arc where the minor arc and major arc both are same then that that is possible whenever you have a semicircle so whenever we talk about semicircle in case of semicircle your minor arc and major arc all become the same okay so, so that point you need to understand this so here you can see the diagram so the major arc minor arc you can easily understand this point you have just to the segment so you can study this so the region the region between the chord and the either either of of it arc is called the segment of the circular region or simply the segment of the circle so you can understand this part now uh, now the next part next now the next term we need to understand is called sector before i talk about sector let me talk about arc so if i talk about the formula of length of arc 
So if I talk about the formula for the length of arc, so basically the formula of length of arc is theta by 360 into 2 pi r. This is the formula for the length of arc. So what is theta? So theta is the angle what this arc make with the center at the center. So, so this is the, the arc. So then this is the formula for the length of the arc. Similarly, uh, similarly, whenever you have a circle, now if I talk about an area, if I talk about an area, if I talk about this area, if I talk about this area, if I talk about this area, this area. So if I'm talking about this area, so the area like which is like a pizza. So this area, uh, which is like a pizza. So, so if I'm talking about this area, uh, which like the area from some part of area from the circle. So that that is what is called a sector. And whenever uh, we talk about sector, so for the sector we find the area. So what is the area of the sector? That is theta by 360 degree into pi r square. So this this is what we called as a sector. So, so, so you need to understand the term sector also along with minor arc and major arc. So this segment already I discussed about the segment. Segment is basically uh, the region between the the arc and the and the chord of the circuit. So similarly, this is the sector. Already I discussed about the sector. So minor sector and major sector. Now fill in the blank if I talk about this. So in the blank, so the center of the circle lies in the interior of the circle. Yeah? So everyone understand so where the center of the circle lies. It will definitely will lie in the interior only. Okay, the point whose diameter, whose distance from the center of the circle is greater than radius. So lies what? It lies exterior of the circle. Okay, so because from the center of the circle uh, to the circumference, that is the radius. So anything which, which is less than radius, definitely that lies within the circle and anything which anything which is beyond uh, the the radius definitely it lies exterior to the circle so the longest chord of the circle is the diameter of the circle okay then an arc is a is a dash i don't know when it ends r at the end of diameter so already i explained you so the so normally whenever we talk about an arc an arc is minor and major and in case in case when when minor and major both are same, it's possible only when you have a semicircle. So an arc is a semicircle uh, when its ends are at the end of a diameter. Okay, then a segment of the circle is the region between the arc and the chord of the circle. Okay, then uh, then a circle divides the plane on which it lies in in three parts. Okay, so you need to understand this. So basically, uh, when you when so here. so here, so here in case if anyone have still have anyone doubt, so the center of the circle lies in the interior, so the center. So the center of the circle lies in the interior of the circle. The point whose distance that would be exterior. Okay. So the longest chord of the circle is the diameter. Okay. Then arc is the semicircle. Is the semicircle. When it ends at the end of diameter, segment circle is the region between the arc and the chord of the circle. Circle divide the plane on which lies in three parts. So this this is what you need to understand here so like suppose this is the quadrant so now in this quadrant whenever you talk about if you see this so if you draw a circle so even whenever you talk about a quadrant so whenever uh, we are talking about a uh, whenever we talk about circle circle is a two dimensional figure whenever we talk about circle it is a two dimensional figure so in geometry uh, we whenever we study any figure, it can be two dimensional, it can be three dimensional. Two dimensional means, means they have length and breadth. Although in the case of circle, length and breadth both are same and they're equal to the radius. So this is what we need to understand in the case of circle. Okay, now uh, talking about true and false. So 
so you can pause the video and try this true and false by yourself after even then if you have any doubt then you can uh, you can uh, see the questions in case if you have any doubt so uh, uh, give reason also so the line segment joining the center to any point on the circle uh, is called the radius of the circle so 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 this is true so any line segment uh, which is drawn from the center of the circle to any point on it is the radius of circle and they are of equal length now next thing so this is true i don't think anyone will have any doubt on this this is true so this is this is true okay now next thing a circle has only finite number of equal chords this is false so so you can have infinite numbers of equal chord in the circle okay so if a circle is is there is divided uh, into three equal arc which which is the major arc sorry let me read it again so uh, so the third line is the is that uh, uh, if a circle if a circle is divided into three equal arc okay so each is a major arc that is uh, so this is false so for unequal arc there can be major or minor arc but in the case of in case of equal arc on the circle uh, it cannot be major or minor arc so the so second one is also false the third one is also false so whenever you have equal arc so you cannot differentiate between major or minor arc okay so equal arc is possible in the case of semi circle then then the next statement is a, a chord of the circle uh, which is twice as long as radius okay that is diameter of circle that is true okay then question number 5 is sector is a region between the chord and the corresponding arc so when whenever uh, whenever we talk about uh, the the region between the chord and the corresponding arc that is called a segment not the sector okay whenever we talk about the sector sector is the region between uh, between that between the arc and the two radius of the circle that is basically the sector so whenever we talk about sector so whenever we are talking about sector so what is sector so sector is basically this region it is a region between the two radius and the arc of the circle while what is segment segment is the region between between the between the arc and the and the chord of the circle okay yeah. then uh, then a circle is a plane figure true it's a two dimensional figure and it can be drawn on the plane fine so i hope there's no doubt on this part okay so now going further uh, whenever we are trying to study the 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 chapter on circle so you need to know that equal chord of the circle a substand equal angle at the center so this is the theorem this is the first theorem which you should know that equal chord of the circle substand equal angle at the center so this you can prove through congruency so this this and this will be equal uh, so because the radius so all are equal because the radius okay and and anyway ab and cd are equal that is already given because the equal chords so so by sss by sss congruency you can say that the triangle aob is congruent to the triangle doc so if they are congruent definitely the angles interior angles of them would be equal so simply the angle aob will be equal to the angle cod so very simple concept the equal chords of the circles stand equal angle at the center and it's very easy theorem and i hope everyone is understanding and then the next part of theorem 2 uh, if the if the angles subtended by the chord of the circle at the center are equal then the chords are equal so this is what this is the inverse of what we have studied uh, so the equal chords of the circle uh, subtend equal angle at the center and if the angles subtended at the center by the chords are equal definitely the sides uh, definitely the chord which created this angle would be equal this is what we have studied so all automatically you can prove it now uh, then uh, exercise 10.2 recall that uh, two circles are congruent if they have same radius prove that the equal chord of congruent circle substand equal angle at the center already uh, this is what we have studied already and we saw that theorem sss theorem by which we can prove that prove that uh, if the chords of the congruent circle substand equal angle at the center then the chords are equal so you can easily prove it by by theorem so sss theorem so if they substand equal angle 
definitely they would be equal. So that is very simple concept. So here, uh, whenever whenever we we talk about circle, so whenever we talk about circle, we can easily prove these parts by ourselves. These are very easy thing to prove this. So we can easily prove this. If this angle and this angle is given equal, and they are they all are equal because they are the radius of the circle. So by SAS congruency, you can prove that this triangle and this triangle are congruent. So automatically, if they are congruent, then this and this will be equal. Equal cos subset, equal angle at the center. Okay, and and if the angle subtended by the cords are equal, automatically the cords are equal. So already we have proved the, these parts. Fine. So going further. Uh, now then now the next theorem. Uh, what is the next theorem? Next theorem is the, this. So if you have a circle, and in the circle if you have a chord, if this is a chord AB. Now uh, remember that uh, that. If you draw a perpendicular line from the center, so if there's if there's a chord called AB, and if you draw a perpendicular line from center of the circle, if you draw a perpendicular line from the center of the circle, then definitely this perpendicular line will bisect this chord. So this you can easily prove it. So it is very easy. So here OA, and so if you this see this triangle, so. So in triangle AOD, in triangle AOD, in triangle AOD, and triangle in triangle AOD and triangle BOD, uh, OA uh, is equal to OB because they are the radius. Okay, and then OD is the common. OD is the common. OD is the common between them. Then uh, then angle ODA is equal to angle O. Then that is equal to angle ODB. That is equal to angle ODB because they are ninety degree. Okay, so so automatically uh, by RHS congruency, by RHS congruency, you can say that triangle. You can say that triangle AOD uh, is congruent to the triangle BOD. So automatically AD will be equal to DB. So very simple. So whenever we talk about uh, the theorem says that uh, so the perpendicular line from the center uh, will bisect the chord and and if a line is drawn from the center of the circle uh, on the chord and if that line bisect the chord then definitely that line is perpendicular uh, to the chord. So then then the then the so same thing you can say that perpendicular bisector of the chord of the circle. Will pass through the center of the circle, so all means same thing. So don't get confused by with by these things. So here all means same thing. So uh, so here so all means same thing here. So so perpendicular from the chord from the center to the chord always bisect the chord. This is very important theorem to understand from this chapter. So the perpendicular from the center of the circle on the chord bisect the chord. This is very important thing which you should understand. Okay, then what is a in what is the converse of this? So the line which is drawn through the center of the circle to uh, the line which is drawn from the center of the circle to bisect a chord is perpendicular to the chord. I hope you can understand. This is self-explanatory. Okay. Then uh, going further to understand this part. So whenever we we are trying to talk about a circle, so from from whenever trying to understand the circle, so you can see from one unique point you can draw infinite circle, and then similarly you can see from three from sorry similarly here there's a one point called P, so here there's only one point P, so from one point you can draw infinite circle. Here two points are there, P and Q. From this also you can draw infinite circles. Similarly, if I give you three points, so if similarly if I give you three points, then from the three points you can only draw one circle. This is very important thing which you need to understand here. So so you need to understand this provided that they should be non-collinear. If if of all the three points are collinear, imagine if three points are collinear, then you cannot draw a circle on the three collinear points. So either you can draw a circle like this. 
either whenever you're drawing a circle so either you can draw a circle like this okay whenever you draw a circle either the third point will will left outside or whenever you draw a circle point will be inside so by using three points if all the three points are collinear you cannot draw a circle so in order to draw the circle we need to make sure that at least one point should be non collinear so here uh, if the point lies on the circle then third point will lie inside or outside the circle so for the two points this this is possible when all the three points are, are collinear we need to make sure that all the points should be non collinear so that we can draw the circle so here this is this is the same thing i started the class with this only so imagine uh, if you if we have three points a b and c uh, which are not on the same line suppose you got three non collinear point a b and c uh, which are non collinear now how will you draw the circle so imagine if i give you three non collinear points suppose if i give you three non collinear points something like this a b and c now how will you draw the circle so how will you draw the circle to so in order to draw the circle what you need to do what you need to do uh, you need to draw a chord in order to draw the circle you need to draw the chord how will you draw the chord by joining two points you draw the chord once you get the two chords so here you get the two chords those two chords what you got are ab and bc once you get these two chords now draw the perpendicular bisectors on these chords now draw perpendicular bisectors now draw perpendicular bisectors on chord on chord ab and now draw perpendicular bisector on chord ab and bc so once you draw once you drawn perpendicular bisectors on ab and and bc then the point where the perpendicular bisectors of the chord ab and bc will meet that point would be the center of the circle and and once you get the center of the circle once you get the center of the circle suppose you got the simply suppose you got the center of circle here once you get the center of the circle now what you do put your rounder at o, at o, o put your end one end of the rounder at o and put your pencil uh, uh, on a considering oa as the radius of the circle okay and then try to draw a circle so when you draw the circle then uh, sorry <laughs> i could not able to draw the circle so once you draw the the circle then you get a circle where where o would be the center of of this point a b and c where a b c uh, would be the circum circle in case if you join a b and c you get a triangle of which uh, of which uh, the all of which uh, the the vertices of that triangle will lies on the circumference of the circle so i hope you got the logic very well so then uh, there is only one and one circle which pass through the three given non collinear point you please remember this so there is only one circle which is possible which can pass through three non collinear points so remember this part okay then so 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 once you understood this now you can see this exercise 10.3 draw different parts of the circle so so it draw different parts of circle so it draw different pairs of the circle how many points does each pair have in common what is the maximum number of common points so what is this question this question number 1 so what is this question number 1 question number 1 is draw different pairs of circle different pair of the circle one pair then another pair then then this one the pair then this another pair and then So these are different pairs of the circle. How many points? How many? Then how many point does they have in common? So no common, no common, no point common. One point is common. Then here two points are common. You can see P and Q. Here one point is common P. Okay, and here you can see no point in common. suppose you are given a circle give a construction to find its center already explained this so if you have two circles uh, 
uh, if two circles intersect at two point, prove that the center lies on the perpendicular bisector of the common chord. So suppose this is the question. So this is the question, suppose. So if two circles intersect at two points, so two circles intersect at two points, suppose two circles intersect at two point. Okay, so prove that their center, prove that their center uh, lies on the perpendicular bisector of common chord. So this is the common chord. PQ is the common chord. And suppose this is the center O and O dash. So uh, question is that prove that the center, uh, this center lies on the perpendicular bisector of common chord. So you, you know the theorem, if you draw a perpendicular line from the center of the circle on the chord, then that perpendicular line will bisect the chord. Then this perpendicular line will bisect this chord. So you know that this and this will be equal. Okay, so now you know that this perpendicular line will bisect this chord. And this and this will be equal. So now with that, you can say that this angle would be 90 degree and this angle would be 90 degree. It means that O, O, O dash is a straight line because it is forming a 180 degree. So it means O, O dash is a straight line because it is forming 180 degree. So, so, so this is what uh, this theorem is all about. So if two circles intersect at two points, so those points are P and Q. Prove that the center, prove that the centers lies, prove that the centers lies on the perpendicular bisector of common chord. Okay. So, so, so this, this shows that uh, the center, uh, so the center O, O dash, uh, it lies on the perpendicular bisector of the common chord. So this is what the theorem is all about. So, so th this itself explains everything. So this itself explains everything. Otherwise, uh, you can just join this. You can just join this. So if you want, so if you join this and this, if you join this, so uh, you can easily, uh, you can uh, you can easily prove that that the triangle O P O dash that is congruent to the triangle O Q O dash. So uh, o P O dash would be congruent to the triangle O Q O dash. So you can easily prove that. How you can prove that? Uh, so O P is equal to O Q because they are the radius. Similarly, O O dash P will be equal to O dash Q because they are the radius. And O O and then O dash is the common side. So by S S S congruency, you can prove that. Uh, these two triangles are congruent. So you can prove that uh, these two triangles are congruent. Similarly, similarly, I can prove that similarly, similarly, I can prove that similarly, I can prove that uh, suppose this is D or something. Suppose this is D. So similarly, I can prove that that uh, triangle OPD will be congruent to the triangle uh, O dash P. Okay, so they would be congruent. So how will you prove that? So because, so how will you prove that? So, so by RHS congruency, by RHS congruency, you can prove this. So by RHS congruency, you can prove that. So you know that, uh, okay, one minute. Huh? Huh. No, no, one minute. We'll not use RHS congruency because still we need to prove it is 90 degree. So O P uh, D will be equal to O dash P D. So already you know that uh, this triangle and, and this triangle are congruent. So here P D is the common side. Okay, and and then mm -hmm. so perpendicular bisectors of P is the common side, and then uh, O D will be equal to O dash D. OP will be equal to, so you can prove this OPD uh, will be congruent to O dash PD. So you can easily prove that part. Okay. Hmm. You can easily uh, 
prove that part very well so okay before if you have any doubt on this you can prove that you can prove this okay if you have any doubt on this so you can prove this so triangle opd will be congruent to the triangle opd will be congruent to the triangle oqd okay so opd will be congruent to the triangle oqd so you can you can prove it very easily so so here od is the common side then od is the common od is the common side then op uh, will be equal to oq because they are the radius of the circle okay they are the uh, radius of the circle and already already i proved that a uh, triangle opo dash is congruent to the triangle oqo dash so definitely this angle will be equal to this angle okay so definitely i can prove that i can say that uh, this angle th because th because these two triangles are congruent so o opo dash and oqo dash if they are congruent so the angle will be also equal so angle po o dash will be equal to angle q o o dash because they are the part of congruent triangle so by by using sas by using sas congruency i can say that triangle opd is congruent to the triangle uh, o o d q so if they are congruent so means the angle will be also equal so means means what that mean this mean uh, the angle o d p that will be equal to the angle o d q so the the angle will be equal and and if the angles are equal and you know that p q is a straight line you know that if p q is the straight line if you know that p q is the straight line and the angle is equal so it means means this p d q uh, is a is a linear pair you know that p d q would be the linear pair so automatically this mean that each angle is 90 degree so once you get each angle is 90 degree then uh, because the triangles are congruent so you can say that pd will be equal to qd so automatically it means this is a perpendicular bisector so this is very easy by many ways you can ultimately prove the same thing so i hope you are understanding uh, this much so this this much uh, is what we discuss in the this is in our session number 1 so from uh, in session number 2 i'll start from this equal chords and and their distance from the center so this much uh, from from my end on the session number 1 so we will we'll continue discussion uh, in session number 2 uh, talking while talking about uh, the circles which is very important uh, for all the students who are cbsc or icse or all the one all the students who are preparing for competitive exam where the portions of geometry will come so guys i believe uh, you would have liked the sessions and and you would have uh, learned something from this session this is what what is my objective uh, from this session that something something productive should come out from it and you will get to learn something at the end of the day so so uh, so i highly thankful to all the students who are listening to me so if you if you have liked this session don't forget to click on the like button and if you have not subscribed to my channel so please for please subscribe to my channel so thank you everyone so see you all uh, in the in the next class so thank you everyone so see you all so make sure that you watch the next video where we'll continue discussing the same concept on circle thank you everyone god bless you bye